welcome to the 2023 December episode of the Seedling Stitch Knitting Podcast. My name is Athena and uh, I am a Chinese knitter living in Vancouver, Canada and uh, part-time work at the local yarn store West Coast Wools on Sundays only. Uh, and this is my channel where I chat all about my knitting projects and sometimes about crochet and sewing too, just all the crafts that I picked up along the way. Uh, this is the December episode, so there will be a lot of Christmas knitting <laughs> involved in this episode. Uh, for those who celebrate the, this festival or not, or celebrating other festivals, I wish you a happy holiday season and hope this, will, uh, hope this episode will be enjoyable to you. Uh, so without further ado, please grab your knitting projects or your snacks and uh, get started with this episode. So I'll first start with what I'm wearing. Uh, this is my holiday Christmas attire. Uh, this sweater I'm wearing is uh, the, uh, I think I started all my previous episode is this uh, sweater. Uh, the pattern is called Chunky Maria Stump uh, from a pattern book by the Norwegian yarn brand Sandnisgarn, uh, the Tima 74 issue. And it's, it's a bit of a pattern that's uh, hard to get, but I guess uh, I, get, I, I guess from the Sandnisgarn website you can buy the booklet or buy the uh, or buy the sweater as a kit uh, and this has been such a quick knit it's in nine millimeter needles and the super chunky gauge yarn it's the first time that I've ever worked up to a super chunky <laughs> gauge and uh, I calculated together I only used nine days to work on this sweater from start to finish and actually there were two days where I worked at the yarn store and was like quite busy not working on the knitting much too much and also there's other knitting projects I've been working on so if I'm being fair I probably would only need a week or seven days to finish the whole sweater uh, yeah, there's, uh, it is, uh, as for the, I mean, knitting and the construction side, this is a top-down round yoke sweater. Um, you cast on from the collar and knit from top-down. There is a little bit of the back neck shaping, uh, I think just right after the uh, top collar ribbing for a few rounds with the German short rows, which is quite standard. Uh, and actually, uh, this booklet is quite interesting. Uh, it offers for the same pattern, it offers the top down construction and the bottom up construction. The result is the same, so just based on your preference, you can pick whichever construction uh, that works for you. And uh, in the original pattern, the, uh, as for the yarn, the pattern called for a strand of their Kos and a strand of their Bostedt alpaca, uh, which both are like those brushed alpaca or brushed fiber, like, like the fluffy yarn in about a worsted weight. Uh, and uh, instead I used uh, a Chinese yarn that, that is a brushed merino. It is very, very soft. It's the softest sweater I've ever worn. It's similar to the Bostedt alpaca at the Sandnisgar, but it's, it's just made with merino. The gauge is the same, so I just held two strands of that brushed merino Chinese yarn by Lotus yarn together. Uh, and I think I used four or five balls of it. I'll, I'll check back my note and put my yardage here in the uh, in the note and in my Ravelry project as well. And the red one, uh, I used a wool yarn from my mom and my mom got that from my grandma. So it's like a heritage, just pure wool yarn. So it's very different from the structure uh, of the, like this fluffy stuff. So I actually quite enjoyed this combination because this red yarn gives more clarity of the color work pattern. Whereas in the, in their original design, like both both colors are used in their fluffy Bostedt alpaca yarn, so it's like, it, it's all 
mixed together. The colors are a little bit mixed together, whereas in my knitting, it's very clear. You can see the striking uh, red against uh, white pattern, so I love that. Uh, and the yarn, the brush merino is very prone to peeling and I accept. I mean, like some people would say if it, a yarn peels that they, like they really hate the peeling, but uh, since merino is a very short fiber, if it's a true merino yarn, it will peel no matter what. So uh, it's just the natural process of a natural fiber. So I have no problem against peeling. I will just remove the peeling with the peeling remover machine whenever I have to. So I'm not worried about the peeling at all. And I've been happily wearing this sweater <laughs> since, since I finished it whenever I have the chance. Uh, it's so festive and since it's red and white, I can also wear it for the uh, Chinese Lunar New Year. So uh, both more, more usage for the same sweater. Uh, let me see if there's anything else. Um, and the collar, I added a strand of elastic just so that it won't flare because um, I think like with this type of fluffy yarn with time, it's gonna like wear the color will stretch and I don't want that. And I also would want the color to stay around my neck nicely for a longer time. So uh, what I did, let's see if I can do this. What I did was just from the inner side of the cast on stitches, like the inside of the V, I thread an elastic uh, thread around the collar. That's all I did. So it's, since it's in, in the inner side of that cast on stitch, it doesn't show on the outside. Uh, also, I use the color like almost white color of the elastic thread, so it doesn't show much. I think it's just a nice technique to share. Um, you can also use this technique for the top of your hat or other color or your cuff like or around your socks like any ribbing where you want it to have a bit more elasticity and don't stretch as you wear with time. Um, yeah I think that's all I wanted to chat about this sweater and you have also noticed what I'm wearing is the Christmas hat. Uh, I've knitted it several years, not several. I've finished this one like two years ago, like in the, in the first year where I learned to knit, but uh, it's been a tradition for my channel where I will just wear this hat all, all my December episodes. So I did that last year as well. And I'm just gonna share it. And I don't think I've shared this, <laughs> this mini hat. So uh, I'm just gonna share this. Uh, this cutie, his name is Horatio. It's a crocheted amigurumi toy. Uh, the designer was uh, Picapo 3. Uh, the pattern is from the Picapo 3 book. Uh, and I've just uh, and I've just recently found that this mini hat can work for him. So this hat, the pattern is the Oslo hat Christmas edition by Petit Knit. It's just a triangle version of the Oslo hat by Petit Knit. And after I finish this one, I I have some leftover yarn, so I think I'll just knit a mini hat for some of my dolls. I have lots of the like there at the corner. And to knit this mini hat, I think I just cast on one third of the stitches of the original pattern or something like that uh, and used a fingering weight yarn instead of like a DK to sports weight yarn. That's all I did. <laughs> and and uh, I think I decreased in a faster rate or something. I don't remember. It's such, such a long time ago. And I just recently found that Horatio, his hat uh, is the same size so he can wear this hat and be a mini version of my animal friend and he is celebrating the holiday season as well and also 
I mean, Horatio is a polar bear, but I think if you cover the ear, he kind of looks like an alpaca. <laughs> he, he very much looks like an alpaca. So he will just be our co-host today. Uh, and actually, it's, a bit, it's getting a bit hot here, so I think I'll remove the hat because I'm wearing a super chunky sweater with a hat. It's just too much, it's just too much. Oh, and also with the hat removed, I want to show my earrings. I got these uh, Christmas sweater themed earrings like for $9 at Shoppers. It, it's really cute. <laughs> So just want to show you my uh, Christmas related new acquisition. So now everything is very meta. I wear a Christmas sweater and wear a Christmas sweater earring. So that's all I got to share about what I'm wearing. And I'll go on to keep talking about my finished knitting objects. And the first one is Christmas related. It's my Christmas socks. It's sparkly. I don't know if you can see this. It's very sparkly. It's with a, a sparkly yarn. The yarn brand is this one, Flot Sock uh, 4 Ply Christmas Metallic. I got it from the yarn store that I work at, Workhouse Fools. And I just love how, <laughs> how sparkly it is. And look at the pattern repeat. So it starts from here and it only repeats after I've knitted to like above the heel. And yeah, so. Now I'm very happy with these socks. Uh, the pattern I used is my own uh, No Frills Toe Up Socks pattern. I always prefer the toe up construction just because I can control how long and how much yarn I use. Uh, this yarn is a 100 gram ball and this pair use 50 grams of the um, Christmas sock yarn just so that like after I finished, after I used up 25 grams of yarn, I can immediately switch to the other ball and it's a nice length. Uh, and apart from that, I used a, co a white color for the toe and the, like eight rounds of the white for the, like the top cuff and a green color for the heel, just so that like, you know, if you only use the this variegated yarn and if your pattern repeats doesn't match up, uh, it's, it, it kind of doesn't look so good. But if with these uh, contrast, co contrast solid color toe, heel and cuff, uh, it just looks a bit more, it looks a bit more symmetric, but also you can show up the difference of the pattern repeats. Oh, it, it looks more intentional. It just it just looks better, just personal preference really. And also I have so many like solid color yarns that I can use for contrast, so just use them, why not? Uh, and uh, actually I adapted my own pattern. So in my own sock, in my own basic sock pattern, I offered like a plain stockinette version, a two by two rib version and a, a K3 P1 version, but this one I used a K3 P2, uh, a K3 P2 rib, just so that I can, it, it's just, just to play with the ribbings really because I got bored knitting my own sock pattern options and I just want to have a little bit of difference for this one and I really enjoy the K3 P2 ribs I think it looks a bit neater uh, and since my pattern uh, this is okay for this part and for the leg part I will have to decrease one stitch just so that the total stitch number is a multiple of five just because K3 P2 is you need a multiple of five and that doesn't affect too much just so it, it looks very neat and um, I've been enjoying wearing wearing the socks <laughs> and that's all I got to say about the socks I have another finished object a mini finished object and it's over here uh, <laughs> I think I'll, I'll zoom in so this is my airpod case 
pouch. Uh, recently, for a Christmas gift, I awarded myself an AirPod, and it's the case is just so smooth, and um, I'm not the most organized person, so I just think I, without something. Um, without like a pouch or a case that can catch my attention, I might lose it at some point. And so uh, without investing in an expensive uh, pouch for AirPod, I just decided to make one. And this, uh, this is the, the pattern, I don't really have a pattern. I followed like a video tutorial from a Chinese recipe video tutorial thing on the Chinese TikTok, not really TikTok, but the, like the Chinese social media thing. So um, for English speakers, unfortunately, I cannot really tell you what the pattern is. Uh, but I guess if you are a seasoned crocheter, you can know the construction. Look, it has this little hole at the bottom so that I can plug in the charging cord. Uh, it just like you cast on all the, on the bottom and you increase stitches at the four corners and so that you form like uh, um, what's, what's the word like a circle but very like a rectangle circle. Okay sorry I forgot the word. <laughs> you made a rectangle circle and then uh, you just uh, there, there are a total of uh, 32 stitches, so eight of these squares. Uh, each of these colored square consists of four uh, single crochet stitches, and you, uh, and each of them consists of three rows. And uh, I crochet them for like there, there are three pattern repeats. This is just like the stranded color work of uh, crochet where you wrap the floats inside your um, single crochet stitches. So that's all it is. And then you like crochet a little um, holder thing here. There are like, t there, there, there are just like some chain stitches on the last rounds and then another layer of slip stitches to, uh, to m make the cord thicker and also to just crochet an edge for the top and then uh, you crochet the uh, lid part separately uh, using basically the same construction at the bottom but just without the hole here and then sew them together with backward stitches or something here. Um, yeah. And for yarn, I used a Chinese like sports weight cotton yarn called Meng Wa Wa Er Hao Xian. And uh, you, I used 2.5 millimeter crochet hook and yeah, I'm very happy with the little case. Uh, the color is very striking with the high contrast. So I will always be able to spot my uh, little AirPod pouch. Okay, I'm back. So that's all my finished object. And then I'll go on to talk about my whips. So first I'll show you a whip that I haven't started since the last episode. So it's a completely new whip that you haven't seen. And ta it's a sock. It's a sock sock. <laughs> so it's all getting very meta here today. Is a sock with a sock pattern. <laughs> Yeah, I uh, I only finished uh, this one <laughs> sock sock. Uh, this is it. So this is a this could be my own design, but inspired inspired by a stitch pattern from a recent book. So uh, you know I worked at a yarn store and there is a new book coming. So I was just flipping through the book. The book is called. Uh, Natovation. The, the author is Andrea Rangel. So this is a stitch pattern book featuring a lot of uh, whimsical, cute color work patterns. Uh, yeah, th there are like penguins, pandas, uh, and there is even a pattern called the porcelain throne, which is a toilet. <laughs> so, uh, and in this book, there's also this 
uh, there, there is also a sock uh, colorwork pattern. So that just inspired me a lot. And my colleague and friend working there, Celeste, she suggested you should totally do this color work in your sock. And uh, yeah, I'm just incredibly inspired by the book and decided to make a sock sock. Also uh, in the stitch pattern, all the socks are leaning towards one direction. I'll put a screenshot of the so original sock pattern from the book. Like all the sock face one direction and is like in a grid shape, but I think it's just more interesting to uh, put these socks in like facing different directions and also stagger them a little bit. So this is just uh, my own modification of the original uh, sock pattern. And for the bottom, I used uh, which we call it a salt and pepper uh, stitch pattern, which is just like one stitch of each color and uh, stagger them. So there's not much to say. And uh, and I adapted again my own no frills toe up socks pattern. So this is a toe up color work sock. Uh, I, I just really like my own <laughs> sock pattern construction and it's very easy to adapt that. So in my pattern, there is an option to use the 2.25 millimeter needle. Also, I use the stitch count for the smaller needle, but I increased the needle size. So I actually used the 2.75 millimeter needle to knit the color work just because the gauge will be tighter when you knit color works. Um, and practically just put the color work in. Uh, I don't think I'll be writing this into like a full knitting pattern and sell on Ravelry. Uh, also, it doesn't feel right to me to like make a profit out of a pattern inspired by a stitch pattern dictionary. Although uh, I think in the book, the author did say that you are free to use um, any pattern, uh, stitch, uh, stitch patterns in this book for your own designs, but I just don't feel like it, and I'm so <laughs> I'm too lazy to write this into a full pattern. So I will be releasing my, uh, you know, my stitch pattern and a few notes on how to uh, do the socks, just just so that if you get my uh, the plain the vanilla sock pattern and then you can download the, this uh, my recipe or the modification notes as a separate supplement file for free and then you are free to do a sock sock. So yeah, the sock yarn here I used is a Chinese sock yarn for the green and the Sisu uh, by Sanis Gar in color 1012. I think that's their like natural uh, white color. And uh, my, my gauge is fine and I like the contrast. And uh, for the second sock, I was considering like whether I should swap the color, like use the white for the toe and use the green for the background color and use the white for the socks uh, color. But I don't know, I, I think this looks pretty great, so I think I will probably just stick to this color scheme for the second sock. Yay! <laughs> okay, my next whips, you have all seen them, but I have made significant progress on all of them. Uh, let's start with the Duffy cable sweater. Uh, so the Duffy cable sweater, as I've said uh, in my <laughs> previous several episodes since I've been working on it, this is the Japanese pattern uh, in Japanese and only available from a kit, not available as a standalone uh, pattern. And I got it from like an internal source. So really it's sort of not possible for English knitters to get it very unfortunate but I mean this is such a beautiful pattern so hopefully if with my effort and your demand uh, that like if this pattern got really really popular maybe the Japanese sellers of this pattern will consider uh, making this available as a standalone pattern I don't know it's such a beautiful cable uh, cable sweater pattern and features such uh, interesting design uh, structure so uh, since last episode, last episode, I finished the back panel and 
since that, I've finished the front panel and uh, one sleeve. So the whole thing is knitted completely in pieces and then sewed together. Uh, actually, I think I quite enjoy knitting in pieces for this cable pattern. Um, just because like all the cabling are done in the right side and on the wrong side you don't do any cabling you just like knit and purl accordingly so like with the front and back with the like, right side and wrong side rotation it's easier for me to keep track of which row I am at Mm, yes, and also like to keep track of the increase and decreases to do the shaping. The sleeve, as you already can see, is a very odd shape, and uh, <laughs> and I it it's really like a puzzle piece for you know for 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 this design. So I'll I'll, sh I'll show you how this will be connected. So this is the front panel, and. It will sort of be like that. And this is my left sleeve. And on the top, it splits into like two parts. There is like a long uh, cable thing, and then there's like a small triangle thing. And this triangle will be sewed together with the front like that and form the collar like form the shape of the collar like that and then this this cable at the back here will be sewn like horizontally to the back panel like that and then like the curve will be sewn to the back panel like that and this curve will be sewn to the front panel like that so it's a very very interesting it's sort of like saddle shoulder but not the traditional saddle shoulder it's a very odd very unique kind of saddle shoulder design it's it's such it's very interesting to knit. Also, it, this one also features a similar cable pattern, like the front, like with the basket weave pattern and like a zigzag, a zigzag pattern, and uh, the classic diamond shape pattern here, like that. Uh, and this one, it features. Uh, so this is the cuff part. Uh, it features a provisional cast on and you knit the pattern version and after that you would decrease some stitch and knit the cuff from like fr from here down from the like the from the top down uh, and for my provisional cast on i use the uh, Turkish cast on actually. Um, as some of the sock knitters among you might know the Turkish cast on is the technique to uh, cast on the to the like the toe part of your socks but you can also use that uh, for uh, provisional cast on so it, the effect is the same like the you know you crochet a chain and then pick up stitches from the ridges and then undo the crochet chain uh, it's just the same effect but without the fuss of doing undoing the crochet chain uh, but the price you pay is that you will need to <laughs> leave your a needle here to uh, have these loose uh, to have these to hold uh, to hold these open stitches but I mean I have lots and lots of uh, fake circular needles that like I from several episodes ago I got a lot of cheap circular ne uh, needles from China the last time when I visited back home so that's not a problem for me I have so many uh, spare of uh, needles to do these customs so yeah uh, this one I just need to I just have the right sleeve to do and then the sewing of them together and then the neck and the cuff so I think I probably still have to finish it in 2024 uh, because I have other projects to do but yeah I'm excited that I'll be finishing it soon. Uh, and next whip is also something you have seen before. 
This is the Grammar Core hood designed by Kutova Kika. And I am almost done with the hood part. I'm just like knitting a few more rounds of the twisted rib and it'll all be done. Uh, the yarn I used is again a Chinese yarn. Uh, it's uh, by the brand is Shiku and the type is Yuntuan. Uh, I'm not sure if you can get it from the English knitting world yarn selling websites, uh, but it's just it's it's like a chinette brushed fiber type of yarn. It has like cotton wool and acrylic and is like variegated. I, I think you can probably find some similar thing in the hand hand dyeing hand dyeing industry. I I think. Uh, it, it just it's a nice color. It's the green color I like and I think the uh, The lace pattern also shows up pretty nicely and I'm sure after the wash and block it will look even better So I think all in all I think I'm happy with how it is turning out uh, I'm and all oh, for the construction uh, you knit like a square piece like that and then you pick up stitches around the edge and then you keep knitting in the flat until you join in the round here just like below your face and you knit in the round and finish with some ribbing and and then you will uh, do a tunnel thing around the face so I think I will finish this fairly soon and and I think it doesn't look too busy, but I still think it will probably be the last time that I work with variegated yarn. Um, I think I still prefer solid color yarn for accessories, uh, for anything except for socks. Yes, I think I'll only embrace variegated yarn for socks. Otherwise, uh, no, <laughs> unless it's green, I think. I only like this because it's a green color, so it's not bad. <laughs> and uh, my next whip is a huge, <laughs> a huge whip. <laughs> so it's so huge. <laughs> this one is the uh, Arnie and Carlos. 2023 advent calendar. It's a Christmas stocking. Uh, I think now I have excuse to get a lot of gifts this year. Like maybe many many balls of yarn. <laughs> uh, so this is the first ever Christmas stocking that I ever get. Uh, I mean I grew up in China and celebrating Christmas is not a, a thing, uh, but I think I'll, since I'm here, I'm living in Canada now, I'll be embracing a little bit of the uh, Western traditions, and I think this looks very fun. I enjoyed This is my first ever knit along uh, project, the first time I participate in knit along and um, I've been enjoying it there's a lot of surprises like every day you see uh, every day you knit a little bit and you're wondering what's the next part is gonna be like this heart heart gift part is quite a lot of fun because like when you are here you're wondering whether that will be symmetrical like will that be like just a diamond shape but no next day you got a heart and, and so interesting and here, like the boy and girl dancing part, uh, like the first, I think I was able to guess it was a boy and girl dancing from immediately. And this part, I'm still wondering what it will be. Uh, it looks like a crop, like corn, but obviously there's no yellow color, so there won't be corn. So it will probably be some flowers tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow is the 23rd and I think the last day is the 24th so there are only uh, two more days. Every day you knit six rounds of it so it's a lot of fun. There's a lot of fun. Uh, I did some uh, modifications of the pattern uh, instead of the their own toe pattern I knitted my own wedge toe and uh, the heel instead of their short row heel, 
their short row method is very interesting. It's a method that I've never seen, and I'm just so used to the German short row method. So I'm too lazy to learn new things. Bad for me, but yeah. So I just knitted uh, the heel with the short, the German short row heel method, and. Um, but the effect is the same, so it really doesn't matter, and it's just <laughs> Christmas stocking pattern. Uh, the pattern called for a DK weight yarn. I used a worsted weight, uh, hence the huge sock. Uh, but uh, I think it looks it looks pretty nice, and also like how my like white colored yarn is it's kind of like a fluffy yarn. It's like a, a, an acrylic fluffy yarn from my grandma. Uh, that I've, I've used quite a lot. The yarn is, the yarn is like that. So I think it's pretty good. All right, I think that's all my knitting project. And since we have a bit of the time here, I I've done a lot of sewing recently, like almost one project every week or every two weeks so i'd like to share uh, some of my sewing progress i picked up sewing since the beginning of this year so uh, i'm still learning and just don't look too closely at my stitches because uh, there's a lot of like floats hanging on there if you look too closely and some of so, sometimes my stitches like go like that but all my clothes are wearable so <laughs> all right uh, so my first finish object uh, uh, sewing finish objects is a skirt it's uh, like a green plaid skirt I've, it's the this one is the second time I've made it, I've made this pattern uh, the first is uh, is so the first time I made with this like green and blue plaid fabric that I'm wearing today and I just enjoy the pattern so much that I decided to make a second one but uh, I uh, I think I increased the whole length by like almost 15 centimeters so it's almost ankle long and this fabric is very thick you listen to the sound you can hear it's it is like a brushed cotton I, I don't I don't know like flannel I don't I don't really know the technical word for it uh, I I bought it in the Chinese fabric store when I was visiting China this summer or uh, this autumn and uh, yeah and I think I just wanted to use up all the fabric <laughs> and so I decided to make a longer skirt so it's very warm and a little bit heavy and it looks it looks pretty nice. I uh, I <laughs> I tried very hard to match all the uh, you know all the grids, all the plates. Like here is the seam line, so I think it it matched okay. <laughs> And not professionally, uh, but I think it's okay. I didn't make an effort to matching the waistband with the bottom, uh, but yeah, 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 it's fine. <laughs> I'll also put some footage of me actually wearing this uh, beautiful skirt. And the pattern is uh, Japan is from a Japanese pattern book. Uh, I uh, the it's called Kana's Standard. I really enjoy this book it's like it's showing the same base pattern but like uh, it also shows you how to adapt this into different styles of fabric and, and different length so yeah so this is the the ca this one is the original pattern that i adapted from and there's also like tops and trousers, uh, camisoles, all sorts of patterns from this book. And if you are interested in Japanese sewing or knitting book, you can always get them in Atasi. There's a store called Pamador24 that I always recommend. Um, and they stock these books. And I've checked, I've checked they have this kind of standard um, book um, in their store. And just since I love this pattern too much, I made another skirt. So that's my green striped skirt. And it's here. I, the original pattern is like a uh, navy blue and white stripe. And of course, I'll, <laughs> I'll do a green stripe skirt. 
And I really love how this wristband from like a horizontal, uh, like horizontal straps to vertical straps on the bottom. And this pattern also have a general size pocket. I think only after the third time, I finally like have a good understanding of how this pocket is made. Like all the other pockets are a bit crooked. Uh, yeah, my cat wants food and I will feed him very soon. This episode is about to finish. <laughs> and just sharing my last sewing finish objects. Uh, it is here. It is a very basic slip dress or camisole dress with a uh, open, uh, I mean split, split hem here. It's very long. It's like almost, uh, it's like a midi, midi length kind of. Uh, and it's uh, an underlining skirt for my crocheted wedding dress. Uh, if you want to see my epic crochet wedding dress, there's an episodes, a few episodes ago. Uh, I can put the link there and this is just a lining for that. Uh, in, during my wedding I borrowed a skirt like a, a lining dress from my mom or uh, from my aunt uh, and now since I have the ability to make my own and choose a fabric that's uh, very similar in colors I can improve so I just made this. Uh, the pattern this one is just from like a recipe from the Chinese social media that's shared for free. Uh, it's like there's a photo like with numbers around the shapes. I um, So I have to kind of draft my own pattern. I, I don't have the correct technical language to talk about sewing in English because I learned most of the things from book in Chinese. So maybe my technical terms are not that correct. So anyway, it's the first time that I like looked like at a small photo pattern and transcribe that into a full size pattern on uh, a paper sheet and then cut that and then like do that. Like for the other skirts pattern, I have the like the, the one by one the true sized pattern that can that I can transcribe from but this one I have to like learn about the proportions and do uh, and draft the pattern by myself. I think that's probably the technical terms to talk about it. Uh, if you have any corrections on these please enlighten me. Uh, and yeah, I'm not proud of a lot of the details of this one. Uh, I figured out how to do like the shoulder strap only on the second strap, only on the second strap because on the first one, like I rotated and it, it, it's kind of off. But anyway, since it's a lining uh, dress, you won't see. And it also ended up Bit, a bit too wide on the chest area so I added this like fold thing like basically I, like staple them staple the fabric here oh uh, yeah and it's this fabric is so hard to work with it's like uh, the lining fabric is so thin and so delicate I cannot even use a pin I, I can only use those fabric clips uh, and I basically set the sewing speed to the lowest one and very meticulously sew uh, the thing like very slowly. There's not a lot of sewing involved so it didn't take that much time. Uh, I mean, anyway, I think it fits well with my crocheted skirt and I mean stand alone it is okay as a summer dress just to wear at home like not to be seen by any any other people <laughs> so <laughs> it's it's okay uh, all right so that's all my sewing and knitting results crochet uh, objects to share today and at the last of my episodes I just always share a little bit just about my personal life and uh, today it's just a very short good news piece of good news announcement that I found a job <laughs> I will start a new job uh, since the next week of uh, since the second week of the new year 2024 so it's been it's just been the last few of like vacation free days before my uh, full-time job starts so I've you've seen I've been like trying to finish all the sewing uh, wish list and uh, knit 
as much projects as I can as possible and I've also been uh, cooking a lot of delicious food at home uh, so yeah last a few it's last few days of vacations uh, my job is gonna be uh, with the government it's a government job in uh, BC Public Service it's kind of like an uh, the title is HR planner uh, in my understanding it's like an data data analysis and crossover of decision making for internal uh, HR decisions so I'm I haven't I haven't started the job yet so uh, but, uh, so I don't know uh, like how it's gonna be like but I think it will be a lot of fun I enjoy working with numbers uh, and I enjoy working with people so I think that's a good combination from the both sides um, yeah like the reason I decided to go away from an engineering job like I have a PhD in mechanical engineering but I decided not to keep pursuing um, that part is just I want a bit more of the human connection part instead of just like developing a good product like I want to be able to help people and I think with the government job I and there's a data analysis element that I I am good at from like doing all these technical um, in the academia but also there's more human connection that I got to have from the work so I think it's I think it's a good job <laughs> that I'm, I'm gonna get uh, and also now with this financial support from the full-time job I will uh, be able to enjoy my knitting as a hobby uh, <laughs> better <laughs> and um, it's just without thinking about all the financial stuff in the knitting I just purely embrace the joy of creation creativity I think it's gonna be very good for me and uh, it's crazy I'm 31 years old and finally got my first full-time job <laughs> now I I am adulting I am adulting <laughs> all right so that's all I got to say from my from my personal life uh, thank you for watching and uh, if you enjoy this episode please consider like and uh, comment and subscribe if you haven't just so that you can uh, see more of these contents coming I'll be filming my um, recap of 2023 knitting projects episodes probably in two weeks ish so be ready for that i am very excited for that episode as well uh, so uh and all my projects notes can be found on my reverie and in on my instagram too and if you like to support me financially or you don't have to but if you like you can uh, consider buying my patterns on Ravelry. I have some designs patterns available and uh, uh, you can also consider buying me some pattern from my wish list or make a donation on my Ko-fi page and I thank you for your generos generos generosity <laughs> for those who have already donated or purchased me some patterns so thank you thank you and have a happy holiday season happy Christmas and um, I hope you enjoy a warm and cozy holiday season with your family and pets at home or at your vacation spot uh, enjoy a beautiful delicious meal and in the ends of my episodes I always play a bit of my piano and today I'm gonna play the an excerpt from the uh, film uh, Legend of 1900 there's a song Silent Night <laughs> there's a variation of the Silent Night famous song so uh, hope you enjoy that so thank you for watching see you next time bye